Hi, in this topic we're going to learn about estimation. We're going to estimate the population mean. So in the previous topic we learned about sampling distribution and we have learned that when we draw a sample from a population the mean of that sample belongs to a distribution called the sampling distribution and knowing the properties of this distribution allowed us to see the power of sampling from a population. So while in the previous topic we were given uh, the population mean because we were just ex ex experimenting uh, with the probabilities that a, the mean of a sample drawn from the population, uh, how close or how far it's going to be from the population mean. So to, to be able to uh, um, quantify that, we, we were given the population mean. But as I told you in the previous topic also, that, that does not make sense because if you have the population mean, why would you want to draw a sample in the first place? So this topic here, um, it's realistic now. But of course, the sampling distribution topic was the foundation for that. Without knowing about sampling distribution, you, you will, we will not be able to come out with the methods that we're going to use in this topic and in the next topic, which is hypothesis testing. It's a very, um, it's a very simple uh, concept, by the way. Once you understood the sampling distribution, the concept here is very, um, very easy for you to. Um, to understand and you will see that the technique is really very simple so i hope that you're going to um, enjoy uh, this topic you're going to appreciate a lot uh, all the knowledge that you have acquired in the previous topics all right so let's get started so this is what we're going to cover in this topic first i'm going to start with uh, by introducing you to the concept of estimation what do we do to estimate and what are the different methods, uh, what are the drawbacks of some method, etc. And then we're going to uh, do the estimation of the population mean when a con or with an assumption that we know the standard deviation of the population. Now, is it a, um, a realistic assumption? Depends. Sometimes yes, sometimes no. And that's why we have another uh, method that when we don't know also the standard deviation of the population, what we're going to do. And this is what we're going to do in the fourth point. And between these two, we're going to talk about how, um, or we're going to talk about a criterion that will allow us uh, to decide ourselves on the sample size. Okay, and um, so far we, in all our uh, problems, we were given the sample size, but this is the first time that where you will be able to decide yourself based on a certain criterion. All right, so let's get started. Okay, so what are we doing when we say that we want to do uh, estimation? Um, when we want to do estimation means that uh, we want to determine uh, an approximate value of a certain population parameter. And we're going to, uh, to be really um, focusing on the population mean in all the slides that we're going to see. Um, and in fact, you, we have already been introduced to that. Remember in the, in the sampling distribution topic, we started with an example. The EAI example when the um, HR director was uh, or wanted to uh, have a profile for the managers and then we collected um, uh, a, a sample and we found uh, the, the mean um, the mean uh, salaries of the managers and we said that this mean represent a point estimator right so here we go. This is, in fact, the first uh, type of estimators, the point estimator. So we collect a sample from a population, we find the mean, and we can say that this mean represents uh, or can be used to estimate the population mean. But in this case, we are using a, pop a point estimator. All right, so that's it. We are saying that uh, uh, this is the value that we are estimating because it comes from only one value that we have quantified. 
The other type is interval estimator. All right, when we say that the value that we are trying to estimate, okay, uh, lies within a certain uh, interval, interval. All right, and what we're going to learn in this uh, topic is how to find the boundaries of this interval. So what's that lower level and what's that upper level? And of course, we're going also to use a sample mean to do that. But it's not as simple as the point estimator. We're not saying that X bar is equal to mu. No. All right. We're going to use our knowledge for the sampling distribution of X bar to set this interval. All right. So this is the official definition of point estimator. So we are saying that uh, we are drawing an inference about the population by estimating the value of the unknown parameter, in our case, the population mean, using a single value. Okay, and as I said, we're going to use a um, sample uh, mean for that. So remember when we started the, the course, we said that the ultimate objective of statistics, or it's not the ultimate because it's not all what we want to do, but I mean, it's a very, very um, a crucial objective to, to reach, which is making inference about the population by drawing uh, by ha by drawing samples and getting some um, uh, information from that sample and projected into the population so this is what we're doing here all right so this is point estimator however point estimators has has drawbacks okay mainly three drawbacks first of all we are almost sure that uh, we are wrong right because we know that an x bar belongs to a sampling distribution and has a mean of a mu all right so here we go let me show it quickly like that sorry about this but i have no space so this is x bar and we know that x bar is a variable that has a normal distribution with a mean equal to mu which is the population so when we draw the population mean so when we draw a sample uh, x bar can be anywhere anywhere here or there or there so when we say that for example, this value, this is how, what I estimate mu to be. Here we go. I'm sure that this is wrong. Okay, so we know that for sure. Now, it does not tell us when, when we go for a point estimator, okay, we cannot say how, how far we are or how close we are from the parameter because that's it. We are saying this is our uh, mean. It's a point estimator. Okay, and finally, in order to really uh, make our error uh, less, we need to have a very, very large uh, sample, okay, which sometimes is a very, uh, very expensive. Okay, it's not always easy to collect a large sample size. Now, the second type, which is the interval estimator, also we're drawing an inference about um, a population by estimating the value of this uh, parameter uh, using an interval okay so as shown as depicted in the previous uh, slide that we say that this mean lies within that interval that we know it's upper limit and lower limit all right so before we start explaining about how we're going to uh, develop a uh, estimation uh, interval okay let's talk first about what are the qualities of a good estimator so it should be unbiased okay it should be consistent and it has to have a relative efficiency so let's define what do you mean by that what do you mean by an unbiased estimator so we say that uh, an unbiased estimator is an estimator whose expected value is equal to that parameter okay and Remember that uh, this is a very um, clear property of X bar, right? Because we have learned a complete topic, uh, the previous topic about the sampling distribution, where we learned what? We learned that E of, uh, e of X bar, right, is equal to mu. So X bar, okay, has this unbiased um, uh, property. Okay, so this is what? Then consistency. Uh, we say that an estimator is consistent if the dif difference between the estimator and the parameter grows smaller at the sample size 
grows larger. Also, this one applies a lot to X bar, right? Look, take, take for example, um, if let's say you have a population of 1,000 values, um, or think, if, if what, let's be realistic, think about your class to be the population, and you have just did the test, and uh, we know what's the, the, the class average by summing up all your grades and dividing by the number of students, right? So let's say we have 40 students. If you if I selected only one one of you guys and so it's a sample of one and I find your grades or his grade so this is an the average uh, certainly um, the error of using that value to estimate your class average is very large however what if I collect all of you guys the 40 students so my n is equal to 40 which is equal to the population size so x bar will be certainly equal to mu. There is no doubt about that, right? So this is what we mean by consistency. And of course, you have all that range in between n equal 1 and n equal to capital N, which is the population size. And finally, relative efficiency. What do you mean by that? If you have a choice between two estimators, so uh, you say that one has more or relatively uh, efficient okay when it has a smaller variance okay and this one is also very applicable to our x bar because you know sigma of x bar it's equal to what it's equal to sigma over square root of n so as we increase the sample size right as we increase that one the denominator is uh, increasing so which means the uh, sigma x bar the whole thing will be decreasing all right so we can decrease our variance because sigma square uh, of x bar is sigma of x bar to the power 2 okay so um, we can get a very high relative efficiency